that I need you to tell me where we stand. It doesn't this strong GDP number give us an upper hand against the Chinese who are trying to tell us that that look uh, you need us more than we need you is not a three plus GDP number the end of that narrative. I agree. I think it's a key point. Um, we're negotiating with China as you know uh, we've made a lot of progress but the deal's not done. Uh, Secretary Mnuchin and Ambassador Lighthizer are going over there next week. After that, Liu He, the China's top trade negotiators, coming here the following week. I hope additional progress will be made. I'm cautiously optimistic about the outcome uh, for a deal. But, 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 your point is well taken. China's economy is slumping and has been for quite some time. The U.S. economy, as I say, is in this prosperity cycle with no end in sight. So we believe that does give us some leverage, if you will. But we believe also that China may be open to a lot of good trade reforms. We'll see. I don't want to make a clear forecast, as I say. Headway looks pretty good. But, you know, I guess, and I think the president would agree with this, they need a good deal even more than we need a good deal. But we would like a deal that works for both countries and increases economic growth for both countries and hence around the world. So let's keep an open mind. I think we're moving in the right direction on that one. All right. It's, it's Larry, interesting. Go, yeah. Ooh, can I just quickly, Larry yeah, made a course. point that I think is very valuable. There are a lot of lies being told that the money that the, saved from the tax cut just went to buying back stock. Larry, you and I both know that's not true. We listen to conference call after conference call. And what's happened is, is that people are being put to work. And more important, there is a tremendous spending on capital equipment. In our country, in China, they just try to pump up the economy by printing money with companies that are, you and I know are bankrupt. Mm. That just the only way they make money is a dump in this country. Is it not true, Larry, that a sizable portion of that money went to exactly where it was supposed to go? Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, you're, you're so spot on. And, you know, the cap goods numbers are very important. That's your supply side push. That gets you more investment, more productivity. Productivity, by the way, last 12 months or so is rising, I think, 1.8 percent. So it's close to 2 percent. That's a big improvement from years past. You're getting 2 percent growth in employment. The job story is absolutely terrific. The wage story is terrific. I mean, all private wages are about 4.5 percent increase. Uh, the non-supervisory wages from the jobs reports, 3.2 percent. So you're getting good productivity, good job increases, mainly because capital is being invested into the economy. That's the key. And this is just the beginning. I give you my view, take it or not. It takes a while for these big companies to turn the ships around, but they are shifting now mm -hmm. to a huge capital expansion. And that means better technology, better plants and equipment, modernization. It also means better training and reskilling, as my colleague Ivanka Trump would say, reskilling of the workforce. And the workforce is coming out of the woodwork back in so they will be counted and uh, the unemployment rate probably continue to fall. I just think this is a very ideal situation. Uh, Larry, I wanted to come back to China for a minute because it was interesting listening to you answer Jim's question. I mean, you seem to imply, you know, when Lighthizer's in there and he's got his checklist, that he can go even tougher on the Chinese now with this kind of wind at, at the back of the U.S. economy. Is that a fair statement? Yes, I agree. And that is our position, by the way. And we'll see this. Look, you've got sort of two areas here. And again, I'm not forecasting an outcome because the deal's not done yet. It's got to be a great deal for the U.S. But to your point, which, which I agree, really Jimmy's point. Um, first, on the structural issues, we are hanging very tough. There must be enforcement. We have to shift the IP theft. We have to stop the forced transfer of technology. We have to uh, open up the cloud there so we can use it uh, from our uh, production here in the United States. From the commodity standpoint, both farm and industrial, you've got to have lower tariffs and non-tariff barriers. And that's an area where our team is going to be particularly tough. We love exports. In fact, in today's report, net exports was a driver of the 3.2 percent GDP. That's terrific. That's a Trump policy that continues. But because of our strength, 
and because I think China needs to open their economy to better growth outlook. We will be strong. This number helps that a lot. We will be very aggressive in these trade talks, very aggressive. Uh, and Larry, finally, on the subject of trade, there are those who look at the report and say, well, listen, there was an inventory build. People were trying to get ahead of potentially mm -hmm. higher tariffs mm -hmm. before they were sort of put off. Is there a concern or a question, at least, that trade and inventories drove uh, higher growth than was anticipated by some but won't be there in future quarters? Well, look, um, inventories swing around, as you guys know. I, I think about two-thirds of the inventory build came from the auto sector, which was sluggish in recent months. Now, let me make this point. Uh, to the, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's particularly a trade-related thing, David, though you may be right. There may be some of that in there. It looks to us like it's mostly autos. So here's my point on this. Consumer spending soared in March, okay? You have big job growth, which means wages and incomes give consumers a lot of power. So Looking forward to the second quarter and the third quarter, I think you'll see a pickup in car sales because of the resources consumers have. I also think you're going to see a steady increase in housing. Housing is starting to rebound again. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big positive for the economy. So I think the GDP report will continue. We will stay with our 3 percent growth rate estimate. That's been our view all along. I know some people disagree. I respect that disagreement. But frankly, I think the prosperity cycle is intact, and frankly, I think the Trump policies are working to rebuild America, and people are getting happier and happier, David. I, I'm sure you're happy about this. I know Jimmy's I, I happy about this. People I, like I, prosperity. I, you always make me happy. You know, I'm I, generally, I'm generally, love, everybody who knows me I, knows I'm, I'm Mr. Happiness. I mean, you, you are, man. You and I, yeah. look, I, I yeah. love happiness. I want America to be optimistic again. I think that's exactly where we are going. Uh, you know, numbers okay, are man. numbers and GDP is GDP. But I think the morale of the country is picking up. But I do yep. love these numbers. I, I just think they're beating what everybody else thinks is happening.